Australians hate apartments. There's no two ways about it. A Bankwest survey found that 60% of Australians would prefer to live in a freestanding house, with only 15% choosing apartments. That's unsurprising given that at the 2021 census, 70% of Australian dwellings were detached houses, and only 16% were apartments. Because the truth is, we're a nation of big houses, sitting on big blocks, with big backyards, with a room for everyone in the family. That's how most of us grew up. That's how I grew up, and that's probably how you grew up too. But that's changing. More and more apartments are being built in Australia each year, most of which are located in Sydney, home to almost half of all apartments in Australia. Apartments are on the rise, <laughs> literally. Yet as always, they're up against a crowd that insists that no one wants to live in an apartment. Is that true though? Or is there more to the story? Let's find out in today's video. I'm Sharath and welcome to Building Beautifully. Before I continue, massive shout out to my monthly Ko-fi supporters. Please do consider supporting me over on Ko-fi if you can. Also, if you're passionate about housing and are desperate for the government to solve the current housing and rental crisis, consider joining Sydney Yimby. Hopefully this video convinces you that we're fighting a good cause. Membership is just $20 for an entire year and only $5 for those not currently in full-time employment. Click the link in the top right to find out more. So, what's wrong with living in an apartment in Australia? Well, let's go over the more tangible reasons first. First of all, strata. When you buy an apartment, you're also buying many of the common areas that the apartment may come with, such as communal gardens, pools, and even stairwells. These cost money for the building owner to maintain, and as a result, apartment owners must pay strata. Annual strata fees can be quite expensive, costing anywhere between $550 and $2,500 per quarter or more simply, 0.3 to 1.2% of the property's value per year. That alone is enough to disincentivize many. Next, build quality. It's no secret that there's been some pretty shoddy high-rise builds over the past few decades. The two-place development of vicinity in Canterbury was deemed at risk of collapse in 2021. That same year, the two-place development of Skyview in Castle Hill was found to have serious structural issues. And perhaps most infamously, the Mascot Towers in Mascot were found to have serious structural deformation in 2019. How can we reasonably expect Australians to like apartments when taking these two detrimental factors into account? Well, look, strata is expensive, yes, but so is home insurance. In New South Wales, the average home and contents insurance cost $1,736 in 2022. And that's not even factoring in the other costs of upkeeping a house. Indeed, on average, maintaining a house can cost anywhere from 1% to 4% of the house's value every year, which is higher than the cost of strata. As for build quality, this one is a bit harder to rebut, but things are getting better. First of all, in November 2023, amendments to legislation mean that a construction site can be inspected at any time without warning. Second of all, the New South Wales government is working to introduce 10-year defect insurance for apartment buildings, allowing owners to make a claim as soon as a defect is identified. These are but a few of the many examples of progress that is being made. Strata Community Australasia President Chris Duggan is quoted as saying, when you compare the landscape as it was three or four years ago when those catastrophes occurred to where we are now, I don't think you can compare them because we have moved so far. Now, on top of that, new detached houses are also poor in quality. A new house actually collapsed in Condell Park in April 2023. So really, the problem isn't necessarily living in new apartments, but rather living in anything new in Australia. Another issue is that apartments in Australia are just not built for families. They're generally only built for one or two people. A two-kid family will ideally require three bedrooms, but there's simply not that many three-bedroom apartments in Australia. 
Census data shows that 60% of apartment supply in Sydney has two bedrooms, while fewer than 15% have three or more bedrooms. Even though 65.6% of all dwellings in Sydney have three or more bedrooms. Okay, so the reasons why Australians don't want to live in apartments is that they're just not built properly, they're just not built to the right size and strata. But I genuinely don't think that these are the cause of our aversion to apartments. I think they're symptoms. I think that our dislike of apartments runs far deeper than any of us could expect. Look no further than the comments on the last video I did about housing. Not everyone wants to live in apartments or townhouses, and there's nothing wrong with not wanting to change your quiet leafy suburb into heaps of apartments. Families need backyards. Damn breaks my heart seeing kids playing in carports and driveways. If Sydney is full of apartments one day, why would people still live here? Who doesn't want a big house with a decent sized garden for the kids? Who truly wants to live side by side, shoulder to shoulder with neighbors? Australian cities should not become like Hong Kong. The reason why we are so good at sport is because we had houses with backyards in them for us to play sport in with our brothers and sisters when growing up. I, 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 I'm sorry, we're good at sport because of backyards? Really undermines all the training and hard work athletes go through, but okay. See, our version of apartments is sewn into the very fabric of what it means to be Australian. It all comes back to the Australian dream. Back in the 1950s, the Australian dream was born, mostly due to the post-war economic boom and the advent of the motor car. It was essentially the concept that every Australian could own their own detached house. Home ownership rates in the first half of the 20th century were only 50%, lower than they are now. By the mid-1970s, they had reached over 70%. Sydney families like to own their own homes, and everywhere the houses are going up. The Australian dream is the simple idea that no matter what your job is, no matter how much you earn, no matter where you're from, you can afford to own your own freestanding house in Australia. An ANU survey in 2017 found a staggering 74.7% .7 of Australians believe that owning a home is an essential part of the Australian way of life. This is how powerful the Australian dream is. This is why our apartments are kind of crappy. They're not seen as permanent homes by the wider property market. They're built for investors to rent out to people in their 20s who need somewhere to stay for a few years while they save up for a house deposit. Well, that's the general perception. Surely you can put up with the expensive strata, with the insufficient bedrooms, with all those inconveniences for just a bit, right? Move into a house later. Growing up in a house is quintessentially Australian, to the point where people genuinely think that our big houses are specifically what makes Australia great. Kids that don't grow up with a backyard are pitied. Never mind that the best apartment developments have surplus parkland for kids to play in due to more efficient land usage. I dare you to read any article about apartments and count just how many times people pretty much say, we don't want to be like Hong Kong. There's always a subtle sense of racial superiority, I swear to God. They never do seem to choose the many dense, predominantly white cities, do they? Oh, and on that note, I know that this video is going to get anti-immigration comments. Go ahead, but just so you know, I'm going to be making a video specifically about immigration very soon. I'll be reading your comments, and I might just rebuff them in my next video. You've been warned. <laughs> Look, the sad truth is, we can't just keep building detached houses everywhere. We're running out of space. Perth is one of the longest cities in the world. Melbourne is sprawling in every possible direction. Brisbane may genuinely join the Gold Coast at some point, and Sydney is pretty much the only capital that actually has geographic borders forcing us upwards. Urban sprawl is pushing people further and further away from jobs, schools, hospitals and amenities. Apartments in infill areas help to fix this problem by allowing people to live in more convenient locations where infrastructure and amenities already exist. The thing is, many Australians don't understand this because they grew up during the peak of the Australian dream. They'll protest anything that isn't a house because they think that that's what makes Australia great. And I guess you can't blame them. That's simply when they grew up. Vincent Crow is a 74-year-old Australian who perfectly personifies the problem. 
He's a resident of the inner city suburb of Haberfield, a suburb that's entirely located in a heritage conservation area, preventing pretty much any new development from happening. Despite its convenient location only six kilometers from Sydney CBD with two L1 light rail stations. Unsurprisingly, since he lucked out and owns not one, but two properties in the Haberfield area, Vincent's not exactly concerned about the housing crisis, but rather more about preserving Haberfield's character. This man actually hasn't even considered young Australians. This is a comedic level of ignorance. So what's Vincent's solution then? If they refuse to build any apartments in Haberfield, where are the rest of us meant to live? <laughs> Apparently, get this, people could move to places such as Bathurst, Albury or Orange. What? This fundamentally misunderstands how cities work. People want to live in cities like Sydney primarily because of the jobs. I don't think Google is planning to open an Orange HQ anytime soon. <laughs> On top of that, while country towns are nice, 5 million people live in Sydney and presumably most of them like the city's liveliness and culture. Also, decentralization as an economic policy just generally doesn't work and it hasn't even been proven to slow the growth of our cities. The irony of all of this is that Vincent was a teacher. A teacher currently makes an average of $90,000 a year. I'm going to assume Vincent's wife also worked and also earned the same amount of money and didn't have kids and didn't have any expenses. Very generous assumptions. And yet the maximum they can borrow now in the year 2024 is $862,830. The median house in Haberfield currently costs $2.9 million. Vincent, mate, you never would have been able to afford to live in Haberfield as a teacher if you were born in my generation. You and many Australians are so focused on preserving houses and heritage that you're missing the bigger picture. Essential workers, the workers that are making your coffees, the workers that are cleaning your houses, the workers that are looking after you at local hospitals. They're forced to commute all the way from places like the Central Coast, Penrith and Liverpool with an average commute more than double that the length of the New South Wales average. Look, we can upgrade train networks all we want. Those places are always going to be far away. Apartments in well-located areas like Haberfield would dramatically increase housing supply and allow essential workers to live closer to work. But community groups like the one you, Vincent, were president of three times, protest every time anything taller than 10 metres is proposed. Because here's the thing, Vincent, you wouldn't be able to afford a house in Haberfield, but you could now afford one of the very few apartments in Haberfield. Their median price is only $828,000. While most Australians would prefer to live in a house if given the choice, affordability and convenience are not things that you can just ignore. I wonder how many people would have voted in that Bankwest poll if the options were a poorly located affordable house, a well-located affordable apartment, a well-located unaffordable house, or worst of all, a poorly located affordable apartment. Well, unsurprisingly, Australian families prefer a well-located, affordable apartment. A study by the University of Wollongong found that families prefer large, well-located apartments over detached, poorly located houses. Of course I'd prefer to live in a well-located house. For Christ's sake, my dream would be to live in this mansion right opposite Warrawee Station. But that's too expensive for me. And so if the only affordable way to live in a house is to live 60 kilometers away from work, then of course I'm going to choose the well-located apartment instead. Decades upon decades of poor urban planning have forced me to do that. But the thing is, I don't mind that because I personally think that a kid doesn't need a backyard if they have a massive nearby parkland. And I'd rather raise my kids in a lively, well-located apartment development than a house two hours from the city. Not everyone will agree on that, to be clear, but many will. What I want you to take away from all of this is that we need apartments. And I haven't even had a chance to touch on townhouses, duplexes and terraces. Watch my housing diversity video for more on that. It doesn't need to be a choice between a house or a unit. 
If we build more missing middle density, then people can still get their precious backyard and just sacrifice a bit of floor space. So we have a choice. We can either keep allowing people to live further and further and further from the city, or we can finally overcome an ingrained culture overly obsessed with houses and learn to embrace density. If you agree with me and you want to help encourage the government to build more apartments, join Sydney Imbi. We're a housing advocacy group advocating for abundant housing in Sydney. There are places all over Sydney, just like Haberfield, that Sydney Yimby is fighting to get more density built in. We've grown so much in just a year, but we need your help. Your voice can help make Sydney a city that everyone can afford to live in once again. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.